Hey, what's going on everyone? If you're interested in balling on a budget, what I mean by that is customizing a case, customizing components in your PC build without breaking the bank, then this video is for you. I've got three hot tips, ways for you to make your build look unique, different from all the rest, by painting, by adding custom sleeve cables, and by doing a few other things that you might not be comfortable with up front, uh, but it will certainly make your build look different than any other out there. You can take one of these to heart, you can take all of them to heart and throw it in your next build, I don't care, but these are options that I've considered in the past and have done myself to make my builds look unique. So if you're interested, keep watching. The first thing I want to cover is painting, and I'm going to bring this up first because it is probably one of the most daunting things you could possibly do with your components, right? Painting things could potentially ruin the components, especially if you don't isolate the parts you want to paint properly, uh, and it's a pain to get this paint in particular off. So I do recommend Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch, uh, something along these lines. Paint plus primer is important, so it's going to look slightly glossy uh, versus like a matte finish with... Uh, most of the plastic dips out there unless you throw a plastic dip gloss uh, on top of it Which again is another paint job in and of itself So uh, the important thing about this paint though is that it bonds to plastic and most of the stuff We'll be painting in here is either plastic or metal So this is kind of an all-purpose painting tool uh, that we're going to use again though Some people would swear by other brands other types of paint I've used this stuff a lot in the past and it's good for me uh, So if you want to copy what I'm doing, I don't think you have a problem as long as you're at least you know, somewhat familiar with spray paint. So I think in this build, you can see it's pretty blacked out. This is an R7 2700 build with an MSI uh, X470 motherboard. Yeah, X470. Uh, and we have a cable management bar that I think we want to paint. And I think we're going to paint the SSD trays here uh, and maybe the tray that's behind this SSD uh, from Samsung. I think that that's really all we want to do here. I don't want to go overkill and make this whole case yellow. We might paint something special up front. Uh, with this front panel, but I think for now the cable management bar is begging to be painted and we can remove it There are only two screws up top holding it and I think two screws down below and then uh, when we paint that I think the yellow bar is good. It's gonna really stand out But I think it'll be it'll stand out well because it's not gonna be Overkill right the whole case isn't gonna be yellow on the inside just the bar and it's gonna be a nice touch I think so let's go ahead and take that out paint it and we'll see what it looks like Now one thing you want to watch out for, especially when you're painting components like this, or just even pieces of simple plastic, this is a cable shroud here from NZXT, uh, we want to get rid of stuff that we don't want painted. So this right here is a little cable management clip, there are two of them. Uh, behind the shroud and we want these taken out before we paint because these are going to be difficult to, to paint right there There's a lot of crevices in here a lot of creases that paints not really going to reach very well So it's going to look unevenly distributed so we can remove these via simple Phillips screws here and here and then uh, we'll be good to go So again isolate what you want to paint don't try to paint around stuff that you can easily remove All right, so the fourth coat of paint is drying. I recommend four to five coats, maybe more, maybe less, depending on how you know vigorous you're applying uh, the paint in the first place. Uh, but four is good for me, and I've pretty much covered everything, including the side rails, which you're not going to see, to be honest. Uh, but you know, the, the top part's very easy because it, it does have a, quite a large surface area. Uh, but the sides are also important, and you'll see the edges here, kind of going all the way across. And you want to make sure you paint those as well. So rotate this thing. You can see I used a little piece of cardboard to prop it up just a little bit off the ground uh, because sometimes the paint will stick to the edges and then when you pull it up it'll tear some of the paint uh, so this is just you know little things that I've learned over time to, to try to manage as you go uh, but I think it looks really good the color is like more like a baby yellow uh, but this is actually gonna be for Lisa it's her temporary yellow themed build that I promised her until we get the custom loop around uh, and she loves this color so that's really all I'm concerned about you can also see I used like an old Amazon box I kind of just turned it into my own little paint studio and I recommend trying to close off your painting process from the environment because if any dust does uh, you know, get onto the object while it's being painted, you're gonna have a bad time uh, trying to clean that up. Especially if you paint over it again, you're gonna have little bubbles and ridges and it's not gonna look very smooth and clean like it would from the factory. Uh, so again, try to close off your environment. I recommend doing this inside if you can, although I know you don't wanna deal with the paint smell inside. Uh, you can take it outside, but try your best to close it off because if, like I said, any dust or anything from outside touches the paint uh, or the paint job, and if you have any humidity outside, especially if you live in the south, it's going to be a pain to deal with 
uh, if you don't have you know ways to mitigate that I use a box even indoors it's nice to isolate your object you're trying to paint and I think it turned out quite nice all right so while the remainder of our paint dries in this box right here I want to talk now about cables custom cables go a long way now you don't have to spend 200 or 300 bucks on a you know a custom sleeve kit like let's say from cable mod if you buy you know a pro sleeve cable kit that can cost upwards of two to three hundred bucks if you want individually sleeve kits with the, the you know the, the pro editions and the metal uh, combs and what have you there are several different Different options you can choose from really expensive stuff down to the really cheap stuff that they sell just little extensions and I recommend if you're on a budget going with just extensions you can get extensions for you know fairly cheap you can get a full kit 24 pin 8 pin EPS you know two 8 pin VGAs or two 6 pin VGAs what have you for around 100 to 150 bucks that's not too bad look if you're weighing aesthetics though you're gonna have to open your mind up to the fact that you're gonna be paying more for these extra you know beauty products if you will they're not gonna enhance the performance of your system in any way but they're gonna make it look so much better better and unique at that. So I wasn't planning on showing you all of these. This is my little briefcase here of uh, just extra cables that I have laying around. It's just a few kits. I do have most of them actually running in current PCs, but I wanted to show you this one in particular. This is actually from Primo Chill. once the autofocus works out. This is a very cheap cable extension, and the good thing about extensions is that they work on any power supply, right? They're universal because all the extensions are universal. Uh, so any ATX, ITX, modern, you know, motherboard this is going to work with, any modern power supply. Uh, so this runs about 20 bucks. You know, this isn't expensive at all versus running a full sleeve 24 pin cable straight from a power supply with which the cable is dedicated would cost you upwards of, you know, 40, 50 bucks in some cases. So cheap extension, much cheaper. You can tell that the quality is not quite there. These are thinner cables. The sleeving is just kind of pre-done, nothing handmade about it, uh, but it will get the job done. So it'll look different from just the generic power supply cable sleeving if it's sleeved at all uh, and it's not going to break the bank. Now, this kit that you're looking at was actually configured via cable. Cable Mods configurator website. Uh, these are Pro Series cables here, and I had these run specifically for the G3 series from EVGA. EVGA, for the most part, uses the same pinout for all their uh, power supplies, but uh, I'm going to be using it with their P3, excuse me, not a P3, their G3 uh, 850 unit for Lisa's build. Uh, so these cables look much better, in my opinion. You can tell that the cables themselves, like the gauge, is uh, you know these are much much lower gauge, I guess I should say. Uh, so they're thicker thicker cables, thicker sleeving, and then we have metal combs, and uh, these combs. Again, these are, <laughs> being that they're metal, they're not going to break like the cheap plastic ones that you get on some of the lower end kits. This kit does cost around 200 to 250 bucks for, you know, full on like 24 pin, two VGA uh, 8 pins, two VGA 6 pins, and an 8 pin EPS. Uh, also just a generic Molex and uh, uh, SATA cables that aren't pro. They don't have pro for those yet. Um, but uh, this whole kit costs around 200 to 250 bucks. So it's going to cost a lot more, but you're getting quality with this. Um, and I can't wait to see what these look like when paired with that uh, cable bar that we uh, just painted from NZXT. So uh, just something I wanted to point out, Cable Mod is not a sponsor of this video, but I do appreciate their work quite a bit. Um, and uh, I'm just you know, I'm telling you if, you, if you really favor the customization aspect of your build, then custom sleeve cables are the way to go. Whether you go cheap or expensive, it's going to set your build apart from the rest. Now it's kind of a bonus customization option here before we get to our third major talking point. I wanted to bring up these uh, Noctua NF F12 fans. So I have a couple of the 140 mil variants as well. Uh, but what makes these special is that you can actually change the little uh, rubber vibration mounts here on the corners of the fan so you can just remove them just like so and actually one fan kit comes with six different colors I believe so white green blue red black and yellow uh, and then you can see I have black on the other side here just because it's you know not going to be seen this is going to be pressed against the uh, back side of the case uh, so we have yellow up front uh, and this of course fits with our yellow theme and if I want to swap these fans into another build that, that let's say is running a blue theme then I can swap these little rubber vibration mounts off for the blue ones. So uh, very nice that you can change these. I like what Nacho has done here. I like that the fan is black and not that weird brown tan color. You learn to love it eventually because Noctua fans are very quiet, uh, but these Chromax fans here are re just really good looking, I think, and they're going to be a little expensive, but they're going to sound great, and again, you're going to get that customization option. So let's jump into the fourth point here. We have all of our kits behind us. We have the custom sleeve power supply cables here. Further to the right, we of course have the Noctua fans we just discussed. We have this right here from Arctic. Arctic is the same company that makes the Arctic Silver Paste that you've, I'm sure, heard of before. Uh, MX4, I believe is what it's called. Uh, this is called the Freezer 33. It's an esports cooler and it has yellow fans and I really dig the, uh, the all black design here of the heat sink. So we're going to roll with this for the CPU cooler. I'm going to swap out from the stock cooler just because we're going for a yellow theme here. I don't want to throw an RGB cooler in there uh, just because it's I, I'm not really looking for RGB. I just 
just want yellow accents in general. So that's where this is gonna come in handy. And then we have the bar. This is the NZXD bar. I think it's safe to touch now. I'm gonna be careful with it because sometimes you can put your fingerprints in paint that's not totally dry yet. Uh, this is a bit off yellow from the other components we're gonna have in the system. It's more of a baby yellow, like I said, but it's gonna be a nice touch, I think. It's just gonna stand out from the rest of the black interior. Uh, so let's go ahead and start assembling all this stuff back into the case and see what our end result looks like. All right, so it is day two, and I wanna talk about our third tip, and this is gonna be vertical graphics card mounting. Now, there are several different ways to do this. You could completely mod your case and set up your own kind of vertical mount. Uh, you could use the Cooler Master vertical graphics card mount, uh, which requires you to cut into most cases. We'll talk about that in a second. Or you could use Cable Mods vertical graphics card mount, which shifts your card just a little further to the front, which might impede some uh, of your card's abilities to fit in your case. All depends on your dimensions, uh, but that doesn't require case cutting. So uh, the cable mod bracket will be coming out again soon. They had to make a couple revisions uh, to finalize things. It was sold for a while, uh, but they're fixing some things associated with a cable because it's difficult to get cables routed through the back. So uh, stay tuned for that. But this one here is the Cooler Master bracket. We're gonna use it for now because it's really all we have and it will get the job done. Uh, but over here, you can see that I've actually disassembled a Founders Edition GTX 1070 and I decided that I wanna paint part of this. So I'm not gonna paint the whole thing. It would be just you know overkill yellow at this point, uh, but I'm gonna paint this part right here. So this is typically black. You can see it's black now, uh, but we're going to paint this yellow. And I think it'll look pretty cool when it's paired with the silver in here. And we do, again, remember, have a, just a tiny hint of silver in the cable mod cables. So I think it's gonna look really good. Let's take this outside and start painting it. All right, and you can see this is starting to come along. This one's more difficult because it has a several little creases and bends to it. It's not a simple, you know, flat piece like the cable bar was from the, the S340. So uh, we're just gonna have to try to manage this one as best we can uh, and hope that it is at least maybe like a one foot mod or a two foot mod. Uh, I don't recommend painting stuff like this unless you are confident uh, that you have enough patience for it and uh, that you're careful enough with it, right, not to touch the paint while it's drying uh, because once again, you get fingerprints in it and stuff like that, then it's very difficult to uh, fix. So I think we'll do probably a couple more coats. I'm gonna rotate this around and get the back side of it uh, and make sure that the top is coated because the top is what we'll see the most. Uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to finish this build off. Now, while the graphics card finishes drying, I wanna talk about this last part and that is vertical graphics card mounting. Uh, and I have a video fully dedicated to this installation process. I'm not gonna bother showing you every step. That video is linked in the video description. It'll show up in a card up top, I'm sure at some point throughout the video. Uh, but we're gonna install this. I'm gonna show you what you need to cut. Uh, and then we should be good to go reassembling the graphics card and then mounting this vertically. By the way, this Cooler Master kit does include, uh, as long as you're sure that you pick the, the right option when you go to buy this, uh, it does include a riser cable. Make sure you buy the one with the riser cable. I don't expect you guys to just have one of those laying around. Uh, and their riser cable will actually fit perfectly with this bracket. And that's exactly what you wanna look for because it'll look really clean. You have a flush finish uh, and you shouldn't have any issues because their riser cables are actually pretty good. All three of the ones they sent me uh, worked out of the box. Not sure if they tested those beforehand, uh, but I haven't seen too many bad reviews of Cooler Master riser cables. So, so far so good. Let's go and get this thing installed and then uh, we should be able to call this one finished. Hopefully, it's been two days now, so let's get started. So what I'm gonna do first is line this bracket up beforehand, kind of like a test fitment, uh, so we can see exactly where we need to cut. Uh, so with this thing already all the way in there, you can see we need to cut 
about here on this side and about here on this side to make way for our uh, graphics card's rear I.O. So this is the included riser cable from the cable mod kit and uh, you can see it just connects to the bracket like so. There's uh, one hole on this side and then one hole over here uh, and you can use the screws that are included in the kit to secure the riser cable to the bracket and there you go. And installation from this point out is pretty straightforward. All right, and the last thing to do is to uh, plug in the 8-pin supplemental VGA power cable, and we should be good to go. That cable, by the way, is all yellow, so it should uh, complement this kind of baby yellow, I don't know what you want to call this, like partial shroud, whatever. Uh, and then I think that's it. For the rest of the system, we've already cable managed at the rear, so uh, this system is basically ready to go as is. And here you go. This is a fully custom PC, I would say. I mean, we've done everything we can to make this look our own. I think if you put this next to something that you could just build straight up right now off of Newegg or Amazon, this would definitely catch people's eyes because they know that it took time, right, to get these colors coordinated, to paint the stuff that you painted, the custom sleeve cables, the uh, custom mounted fans. I think everything in here looks really well coordinated, uh, especially if you're into a yellow theme build. Now this is for Lisa, so she wanted yellow and that's why it's yellow. You might not like the color. I totally get it. You know, this is a more or less a subjective thing. But for her, she likes it. That's all I'm really worried about. I do want to know what you guys think, though, about the process in general, the three steps that I showed you guys. Uh, you know, if you're weary about, of course, cutting into your case, you can scrap the vertical graphics card mount. Some people don't even like the way this looks, and I get that. The airflow issue, though, is pretty much solved here because the card is pushed far back enough against the motherboard that there's plenty of space between uh, the fans on the card, or in this case, a single uh, blower-style fan, and the tempered glass panel. So it's not really being choked for air at all. The only issue you really have to worry about is the riser cable being of good quality, and this one from Cooler Master typically always is. Again, though, I do want to hear what you guys have to say about this build in the comment section below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Share it with your friends if you thought it was super cool. Share them at least one of the three tips. I mean, painting stuff isn't super easy, and vertical graphics card mounting isn't super easy, but this is the price you pay for getting a build to look unique, right? Traditional PCs just look a little bleh now, right? Because a lot of people have custom-built PCs. But this is a truly custom build because we did paint, we did cut into the case, we vertically mounted a graphics card, and we also have custom sleeved cables. I think all three of those are going to set you up for an artistic build, one that's definitely not going to look like it came out of a cookie cutter, if you know what I'm trying to say there. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and catch us in the next video here on the channel. This is Science Studio. Thanks for building with us.